Should All be right. good. Yep. I see that we're recording. Uh, good evening. The time is now 6.35. I'm Chairman Mike Curry, and I'd like to call this Board of Selectmen business meeting to order on this 27th day of May 2020. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance oh, yeah. to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. Republic, Republic which stands for the nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I'm uh, just going to do a quick roll call for who we've got in the room tonight. I see we have Diane Haley. Um, Adam LaMontagne, Bob Skozik, Jeff Bennett, Carter Terenzini, Terry Griffiths, um, Sean Lampert is our TCTV uh, technician, Holly Young is on, and Jesse Bratko. Jesse Bratko has uh, business tonight in front of the board. Carter? Carter, you got to go on, on mute. Apologies, uh, Jesse's uh, item 5D, the conservation restriction on Royalston Road. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, I'll go through my normal spiel before we begin the, uh, the meeting. And um, what I'd like to do, unless uh, any of the, and we do have a quorum tonight, um, I'd like to move Bob Skozik and um, Miss Bradko. I'm, I'm assuming Jesse is a, a, a woman's name. Sorry. Yes, you're right, Mike. All <laughs> right, thank Jesse. you. I'll, I'll actually add both, I'll bump the, both of them up the list. Thank you. Great. Um, before we begin, I'd like to state for the record that we are not only, well, we're not live streaming um, <coughs> due to technical difficulties at this time, but we, but, uh, we are recording the entire proceeding this evening, except, except any executive sessions. Um, they will be ready for YouTube and TCTV cable station eight for later viewing. Um, I don't need to ask if anyone from the press is present as I've already gone through for a roll call. Thank you. As always, our agenda for this evening has been set no later than out, uh, no later than 48 hours out by law and is publicly available at the official source for town information, templetonma.gov. Um, I know Tom Smith from the advisory committee had some um, issues trying to get to our agenda. Um, and I'm really glad that several people that are on tonight mm -hmm. um, uh, got back to Tom to basically show him where uh, the calendar items are. Uh, I think there's one rogue calendar out there that may be on the BOS page, um, but we can take care of that. The good news is that all of this information and the um, agenda for this evening uh, were posted uh, several days out. I'd also like everyone, uh, we are still in a state of emergency for uh, COVID-19. Uh, getting updates through the Code Red system is easy. You can sign up uh, via the website or you can text the smart, uh, the, I'm sorry, you can text from your smartphone the keyword Templeton MA, all one word, to 99411. Um, let's see, I think that Let's see, Zoom rules of the road. Um, please use vi video when possible. Please mute yourself when not speaking. Um, although TCTV, uh, Sean and I can actually help out with that. If someone's got too much feedback, uh, we'll just make sure that we're uh, unmuting when uh, we can. But otherwise, go on mute. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to hear the speaker. If you wish to see the material shared in the screen, uh, like Bob's uh, spreadsheet tonight, uh, please request that of me. Um, I can actually, I have access to all the documentations and I can put that on the screen for the public's viewing. Um, if you wish to speak, you can raise your hand, you can use the raise hand feature in Zoom or just politely break in if you're, uh, if you're connecting only by telephone. Um, if we were on the live stream, um, the live stream, people could answer, uh, ask questions and as we see them come in or when appropriate, we can answer them. Uh, again, we've got a little bit of a technical difficulty tonight connecting to the YouTube live stream, um, but the the, uh, the entire um, meeting will be available. Okay, um, moving over to the agenda for this evening.
<clears throat> okay, um, first we're gonna have uh, Carter. Uh, I don't think there's any introductions for new employees, but I do think that we have some committee appointments this evening. Um, the, uh, you have some minutes to approve also, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, let's do the, uh, the minutes first. Um, within your, within your meeting packet, you should have the meeting minutes from, uh, our business meeting on April 22nd. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Diane. I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes of Wednesday, April 22nd. Um, as written. Thank you for the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Jeff. I have a motion and a second to uh, admit the Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020 uh, business meeting minutes to the record. Any uh, discussion? Corrections or observations? The only obs. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, we can. Because I can't get on my normal computer. The only observation I had, and I don't know if we need to correct it, was Lori didn't say why she needed the increase, and it makes it look like she said why, and I asked, but I asked why, because she didn't say why. I don't know if you can see it on item D, action RE increase in electrical, plumbing, and gas, where she explained there was an unexpected boom in real estate building and inspections. Mm -hmm. She didn't say that. I, I, I had asked that. So it makes it look like I was redundant. So I don't know if we need to change it, but I just wanted to make note of it that that's not how it went down. <clears throat> Terry, are you talking about item uh, 5D? D as in Delta? Yes, yeah, where it says RE. Oh, you Delta. asked, okay, I, get, I understand what you're saying. He asked for the increase, and then I put two and two together because of um, the increase in housing that Luann had spoken of, but she had just asked for the increase, and I just asked her um, what, what it was used for and was it because of that? But if you, if you look at the way it was worded, it looks like she explained herself and I asked anyway. Terry, I understand what you're saying. I see the explanation at the, the top and I also see the, um, the fact that you had, um, a question for her on it. I, I realize that may not be the sequence, but, um, I, I don't see an issue with it. Okay. If, if, I'm easy. I just wanted to make it noted. Yeah. Does anyone else have an issue with the way that it's worded? Or do you think it, that it, it basically captured? Okay. Any other observations or uh, recommended changes or otherwise? Okay, on the, um, on the motion to admit the April 22nd minutes to the record, uh, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Harry? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, next, um, moving into uh, new business under introductions and then committee appointments. Where we've got um, one committee reappointment it's for um it's peter haley is already on the edic uh we just need to reclassify his appointment as we've had a little bit of a shakeup on that mr chairman yes diane i move to confirm the appointment of peter haley to the edic and reclassify his appointment as real estate expert second thank you i have a motion and a second to reconfirm the appointment of Peter Haley, and re or confirm his appointment, and then to reclassify um, his appointment as real estate expert. And I believe those appointments um, last until June 30th. Uh, Holly, is that correct? Uh, I... They normally do. If you'd like to, we could 
since we have our annual appointments coming up at the next meeting, maybe we could do it till the next June 30th. That's completely up to you. He, he's already appointed. It's just uh, reclassifying. Okay. So it's okay. up to you. Okay. Well, we have, we have the motion in the second as part of discussion. Um, any other discussion? Okay, hearing none on the uh, the motion to confirm uh, Peter Haley to the EDIC and reclassify the appointment as real estate expert. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. <clears throat> okay, we have a vacancy. Um, it's unfortunate that, uh, that uh, Mrs. Cover um, had resigned as the the uh, the vice chair for the EDIC, and we have a vacancy uh, in that position. Um, I'd like uh, could I take a motion for um, a nomination for vice chair of the EDIC? I thought it was my understanding that they nominated their own vice chairs and chairs and all of that. Why why are we doing it? But I believe it's I I believe the um, it's part the reason of the reason why yeah it's in our bylaws that that I, that we we wind up doing it. Go ahead, Jeff. It is in the mass law. If you look out up for the creation of EDIC, it specifically states that selectmen will uh, pick a chair and a vice chair for the EDIC. That's why we had to go back and and right. revisit it the originally because we didn't All do right. that the first time. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Paul. I just wanted to note that Amanda Murray is the chair of that committee. So the other three are yourself, Glenn Eaton, and Steve Castle. Okay. And, and and Peter Haley as well, correct? Peter Haley. Peter Haley, I'm sorry, not Steve Castle. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I would make the motion to appoint Peter Haley as vice chair of the EDIC. I would second that. Okay, I have a motion and, and a second. Any discussion on Peter Haley as the vice chair? As uh, Amanda Murray's vice? We definitely got some work coming up in that. Uh, really good things uh, happening for Templeton. Not just the committee, but uh, a lot of uh, a lot of phone calls, a lot of uh, business movement. That Mike, did you say Amanda's now vice chair or Amanda's still chair? She's still the chair. Oh, okay. I thought you said vice chair. Okay, hearing nothing further on the motion to appoint Peter Haley as vice chair of the EDIC. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, um, we are moving into item 5D as in Delta. Uh, action with with respect to the approval of conservation restriction on Royal uh, Royalston Road. Um, Mrs. Bratko, you're on uh, in North County Land Trust. Uh, either Carter or Adam want to give an overview of that? Hi, hey, everyone. Uh, Good evening. The um, reason this matter is before you, I think it's outlined in the email, when a nonprofit is obtaining the conservation restrictions uh, they need to submit it for action to the local governing body. Beyond that, I would uh, defer to uh, Jess. Yeah, um, so this conservation restriction is for Joanne and Danny Burden, their prop 17 acres on Royalston Road, and it's part of the Norcross Hill Conservation Project, um, which conserved um, over 500 acres, including the Fernald Corporation land. So this was funded in part by a landscape partnership grant that required at least 500 acres of property be conserved, contiguous acres. So um, the Fernald land was 465, 
um, the Burdens are conserving 17 acres and then the town of Templeton is working with DCR to conserve um, an additional acreage to make up 509 acres. So this is um, the burden part of that project. Um, they have a conservation restriction and uh, as uh, Carter just said, conservation restrictions that are held by nonprofits. Uh, this one has been held by North County Land Trust as a primary grantee and uh, Mount Grace Land Trust as a secondary. So because it's been held by land trusts, then we need to have uh, the select board approve it and sign off on it. Um, I should say that all other signatories have signed and it's been notarized, including um, the secretary of EOEA who signed it today. And um, they're just awaiting uh, select board approval and then we can get the CR recorded. Thanks, Jess. That, that would have been my question about signatures. Um, so uh, I don't have any other questions. Uh, any other board members have any questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I might. Uh, yes, go ahead, Carter. Um, the uh, additional lands um, uh, that Jess referred to from the town of Templeton, uh, we've already sold one parcel uh, to, uh, to the state. That was about three months ago. Uh, the board uh, took that action. And subsequently at item J, uh, we'll be asking you to uh, clean up the title on the second parcel, uh, which we can then sell to the state. So that's the other property that we just was speaking of. Thank you, Carter. Um, could I just add um, that the, the signatures for uh, the select board have to be, it, it's just you, Michael, as the, as the chair. Normally every member of the select board will have to sign it, but because all these meetings are remote and because we're on a very strict time schedule, EOEA has graciously said we only need one signature, um, but it does need to be an original notarized signature. So um, when, once you have signed it, if you approve it tonight, um, once you do sign that um, in front of a notary and it's notarized, I would make arrangements with someone, either Holly or Carter or yourself to pick it up or it could be mailed to me, um, whichever is easiest. Thanks, Jess. Terry, you had a question? I just was wondering if there was um, an overview of the seven year action plan in section A or if there was some place I could read about it. It says seven year action plan, section A, plan to protect or acquire. So that's just this whole project or is there more to it? Uh, are you referring to the conservation restriction? It, it says seven year action plan, section A, yes, to protect and, or acquire Fernal Corporation lands, which is the objective of the Norcross Hill Conservation Project. So is there more to it? Besides oh, I think, yeah, that is referring to the Templeton Open Space and Recreation Plan. Um, in which it mentions that that is a goal of, of the town of Templeton. Um, and so in a, in a conservation restriction, we have to um, point out why, uh, why the conservation of a piece of property is um, following guidelines and the wishes of the town and the state. So we refer to the open space and recreation plan. Thank you. And Jess, I think you can see, I, I, I pulled up the, uh, the document so we could see the context of, of which uh, 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 Terry's question pointed to. Right, right, yeah. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Um, any other questions or I can entertain a motion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Diane. I move to approve the conservation restriction from Danny P. Burden and Joanne Burden to North County Land Trust, Inc. 
and Mount Grace Land Conservation Trust, Inc. in the public interest pursuant to the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 184, Section 32, and for the chair to sign. Second. Thank you for the motion and thank you for a second. Any, um, any further questions? Statements or otherwise? Hearing none on the motion for the approval of the conservation restriction, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Uh, thank you for coming on tonight, Jess. I will work with Holly. Um, I'm working remote and in town, so I could probably expedite uh, to, to fall in line with what you were uh, talking about earlier, but uh, I'll certainly work with Holly. I believe she's our notary. Okay, great. And then will Holly notify me of how I should pick up the, pick up the signed document? I only need the signature page for the select board. That's all I need. Did you want me to email that to you or do you need the original? I need the original to, for the registry. Okay, I could also mail it, whatever works for you. Um, mailing it is fine, or I don't know if you're ever in the town office. Um, sometimes I feel a little more comfortable picking it up. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll let you know as soon as it's all set and then we can figure that out. Okay, very good. All right, thank you. Thank you, Holly. You're welcome. Thanks, Jess. Thank, thank you, everyone. Good night. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. Um, what I'd like to do now is move item Lima. Uh, that's 5L Lima. Um, Mr. Skozik is with us here this evening. And this is action with um, relative to the adoption of the FY21 Chapter 90 expenditure plan. Everybody should have Bob's original um, e or, uh, memorandum in your packet and uh, the, the spreadsheet promised to us was uh, sent out, I believe, earlier this morning. I know I overlooked it, um, and so, but I do have a copy of it again. Um, uh, who's briefing this, either Bob or, who's, or Carter, or is it, uh, or Adam, are you giving an overview first or is it all Bob? Well, let me, um... Let me just uh, uh, say that this um, uh, is following a formula that uh, the board developed a couple of years ago as to how much money we wanted to put into uh, the categories. Uh, Bob will uh, track them for three or four years. We'll see how that shakes out um, and then modify it as appropriate and move forward. Uh, so that's the allowed column. That's 100% of the money, but how much was set into each category. Uh, beyond that, I would ask Bob uh, to uh, brief you quickly on um, uh, how he came to uh, select the projects and what he proposes to do. Okay. Bob, good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board. Um, Mike, that my last name, it's say so and then Zick. So Zick, not Skozik. <laughs> I'm putting a little bit more spice into it. I'm sorry. You're working too hard. <laughs> <laughs> so as you see, um, he's, uh, chapter 90, 2021 expenditure plan. Um, like Carter mentioned, we started this a couple of years ago so we can monitor uh, the percentage um, according to the uh, road study that you had done prior to my arrival. And that's what this is pretty much all based off of. Um, but some roads do deteriorate because it's so, so slow moving in the repairs. We have to make some adjustments. But um, as you see, the balance unspent from last year is approximately 152,000. And that's with 125,000 already taken out for Orchard Lane project that will be starting soon. And then we're going to be receiving 334,000 this year from the state, which gives us a balance of 486. And as follows, um, breakdown, 
as you can see, we have uh, routine uh, maintenance in uh, crack sealing. Uh, Baldwinville Road, the road study f showed for the whole road $89,000. Um, but we set a percentage uh, and we're going to do $37,500 worth of work. So wherever we leave off on that road, we'll pick that up um, next year. Um, as you see, I got a list of drainage improvements. The two priority ones is uh, Main Street and North Main. Uh, those, um, we're gonna add some catch basin and some sub drainage. Uh, these are uh, problems every winter with ice buildup in Collins. Um, so if I get those two and have any money left, I will have go after one of the alternatives as listed. And that, that's all been approved um, already from MassDOT um, to go ahead on. And we set a limit of 9,500. This year, I'm not uh, putting anything in for equipment. As I told you when I started, I'd rather see most of the money in the roads so only get what I needed at small amounts. Um, guardrails, very expensive, but we got to start somewhere. Um, I got area on Pottersville Road and uh, Harley Hill Road. Um, if there's any left over out of the 10,000 that was proposed, I will address that. We got plenty of spots to, for alternative work. Um, the preventive maintenance, um, that's 45,000. Um, that's for Shimon Loveland, I guess, South Road. Uh, that'll eat all that up. Uh, let's put a small dent in it and help things out, but got a long ways to go on that road. Overlay, uh, gonna finish Partridgeville Road this year, and that road will be 100%. Main Street is a section, 1,600 feet, um, basically from depot up to, uh, how, uh, what is it, um, the bridge there, Hamlet, Hamlet Road. So there's a stretch there, 1,800 feet. At Brooks Village Road, it's a bad area right off of Patriot Road. There's a real bad section there, 600 feet. Um, and if you turn, go up to page two, um, reclamation, uh, full full depth uh, construction. Uh, we got Turner Lane, which is well overdue. That'll be a full reclaim with a two and a half inches of binder, an inch and a half of top. And that's 2,250 feet. And then uh, Brooks Road is a, a section that's bed down by Otto River and past the golf course. And that total comes to $195,000. And then like we explained to you before, we're always gonna leave something in for emergency in engineering uh, as it worked out. As you can see, the Hamlet Mill Bridge, that's where this was a great asset to the town to able to do. So we're always gonna keep something in there. And now over the years, um, like Carter said, we're gonna monitor this and we might need to make adjustments on the percentage sheet. Um, at a, if, if you haven't already, but you can browse um, the different uh, sheets and you'll start seeing a trend. So we might have to move some percentages in a year or two. Okay, we can take some out of full depth reclamation and move it somewhere overlays if we need more and overlays, but at least we have a, a trend going now, which we didn't have before. Thanks, Bob. I really appreciate that. Um, any questions for Bob? No, just an additional comment, if I may. Please, Terry, go ahead. Tell him once again how grateful I am that there is no sand on the road and that the salt worked out so well that I'm just very grateful and excited that there was no sand on my road this year. And I hope 
the community would recognize the benefit of having the sand as well. It's saved a lot of damage and time and wear and tear on my equipment. And it's a big improvement, a uh, step up for Templeton. I'm glad to see it. So much. Sir. Well, Bob, I can say based on your um, on uh, the proposal, it, it basically, like Carter was uh, starting out by saying, it, it went in line with what I believed, uh, you know, the, the road study um, discussed. It talked about um, the synchronization that you and Carter tried to work on, um, a realistic approach to trying to assess the, the roads out there. Um, I try and get out there and uh, you know, back when I was on some of the other um, social media sites, when I, I saw a lot of the the, uh, the complaints about the road, you're right. The roads, there are some roads out there that are an absolute mess, and uh, you got to either uh, strap in or go slow. And that's what I would advocate for people: is you know, if you know your road needs work, we're we're we're, we're trying, we're getting there, we're we're getting the equipment, the infrastructure, and as Bob just briefed, trying to. Uh, to have a balanced multi-year approach, uh, but just slow down um, in, the, in, in the meantime. So uh, yeah. thank, thank you for your proposal. Uh, thanks for your proposal, Bob. Mike, if I may, uh, like I said, um, I know there's so much work out there, but so little money. So it's, I mean, people are gonna realize that what we have to work with, it's minimal and it doesn't get us too far. So this is gonna take um, a very long time to see the light at the end of the tunnel at this rate, but and along with that, I we are working on potholes, and yep. uh, you know we're doing our best, and uh, we'll get potholes taken care of and do what we can with this program. And when it's approved, and I get the green light from Carter, uh, I need to schedule the uh, construction company, Mass Broken Stone. As soon as possible because they feel that the, this year is going to be flooded with work and a lot of work isn't going to be completed because of the COVID 19. Jeff or Diane, any questions? Bob, do you feel that the salt does less, less damage to the roads or about the same? Or I'm just curious. Uh, the percentage we're using is, is not nearly what Jeff works with. Um, we're a couple of steps down from what they put out for a ratio. Um, it, it's definitely less damage. Um, and if you research it, and um, you'll, scientists said sand and salt were more damaging than straight salt. And the treated salt that we're using, it's, it's the minimal of calcium put into it um, versus what Jeff uses. I mean, they're, they're hot. Um, they, that's what they want to do is see pavement as soon as you can. But it's, it's working right. for us. And uh, we, I had a couple of complaints and I did some research and emailed these individuals and uh, they were, seemed okay with it. So other than that, I think most of the majority of the people in Templeton appreciated it. I know I appreciated it. I just wondered, you know, if it would be less damage in the long run. Like it would be more helpful to you. Yeah, no matter what you use over time and years, there's things, that, whether it's sand creating rust on the bridges or minimal assault, you, you're always going to have that corrosion. Um, and then went the time, you know, rinse your car off, you know, maintain the bridges. As you can see, we have two bridges. They haven't yeah, been it's... maintained, so. Now we're going to have to pay for it. <clears throat> okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve your, um, the proposal. No move. I need to accept the Chapter 90 fund proposal. Diane, could you say that again? I make a motion to accept the Chapter 90 
fund proposal as as prepared for us. Oh, okay. Yep. I, I, I also had heard someone had uh, given a so move the way that I'm I sorry. asked the question. Um, I believe I did hear a second as well. Second. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Um, any further discussion on the, uh, the proposed Chapter 90 expenditure plan? Okay, hearing none on the motion to approve uh, Bob's uh, plan as presented. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Bob, thank you very much. Oh, you're more than welcome. Are you all set for the rest of the meeting or? I think so, uh, Carter or Adam. I don't think that Bob's got any uh, further business on the meeting tonight. Um, not that I'm, I'm uh, not that I'm seeing. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Thank Very you, Bob. good, folks. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, just um, I was going to give him a reminder that we're not live streaming because I am getting a few messages from our our, uh, our usual fan base uh, on uh, where that we're not streaming. Um, but I, I did tell him that we have some technical difficulties and it's beyond our control. However, we are recording. Okay, if I could uh, jump right back into where we left off and that is item 5E as in echo. And that is a common victualler license. Lee's hot dog, otherwise known as, got to scroll to it, sorry. Otherwise known as, or it, it's, I think it's it's for Gustav's the second LLC, but it's called Lee's Hot Dogs. Everybody knows Lee's Hot Dogs. May I ask Holly if they have everything? Yes, they do. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Diane. I move to approve the common Vic Collars license for Gustav Gustav's the second LLC DBA Lee's hot dog stand at 31 Central Street, Baldwinville to expire December 31st, 2020. Second. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on Lee's hot dog stands victual license? I like saying it better that way. I looked up how you actually say that word and uh, I used it, I think, in one of our last meetings and it just it sounds much more horrible if you say it correctly. So I'm, I'm proud of my poor pronunciation of our collective pr uh, pronunciation. <laughs> yep. You'll have to, that, everyone's gonna Google it after the meeting now. <laughs> Hearing no other smart, uh, snarky remarks uh, on the uh, on the motion for the common victuallers license for Lee's hot dog stand, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you, Lee's hot dog stand. As a reminder to the public, they are open. They, they are. I've uh, seen their, uh, their lobster rolls being advertised on social media. Um, next item is uh, 5F as in Foxtrot action route with uh, regard to the first right of refusal for yet another uh, property at 12 Mo Millbrook Drive. Um, I'm in receipt of, of the letter from David uh, Gasser, uh, the program manager that is again offered um, uh, us as the first right of refusal for the unit at 12 Mo uh, Millbrook Drive in part of the uh, Day Mill townhouse townhouses. Um, again, we are working, um, we are working to try and remedy the fact the, um, we are trying to remedy the, the situation where we're, we're caught. I think this is, since I've been on the board, um, I think this is now the fourth time where we've had to, uh, um, offer the uh, give a negative or offer of the first right of refusal. It's um, 
it's not fun to do, but we are working on, we do have a plan in place. We've done a few different things where we're moving ahead so that we wind up having a housing trust where we can secure these properties. Um, but uh, that I really have nothing more to say uh, on that. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Diane. I move to waive the right of first refusal for 12 Millbrook Drive. Second. I have a motion and a second. And any further discussion? Hearing none on the motion for the waive, uh, the waiver for the first right of refusal for um, 12 Millbrook uh, Drive. How do you vote, uh, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, next item on the evening this evening is a community uh, block grant. Um, let's see, I wanna make sure I have the right one, 5G. 5G is in, uh, G is in golf. Uh, CDBG Community Development Block Grant for subordination at 90 Michaels Lane. Um, Adam or Carter, any expo explanation or uh, presentation, or should I just read into it? The uh, town received uh, over um, a period of years uh, a number of dollars from the Community Development Block Grant, uh, which it used as loans to various low and moderate income property owners to uh, improve their residential housing. In some instances, those sat behind uh, first or even second mortgages uh, or subsequently uh, the folks have taken on some uh, new debt. We generally sit behind that debt on our loans. And in this case, um, a new uh, lender is coming in. Uh, and so we need to say, yes, uh, lender, we will release our current position um, and sit behind you. This has been a, a common practice in the four years that I've uh, been with you. Uh, in some communities, these rehab grants are forgiven. You end up do getting paid um, over a period of time on a number of them. Thank you for that, Carter. Um, are there any questions about that? We're basically getting, uh, letting Athol Savings Bank jump in front of us on uh, a lien on the property, or not a lien. Am I using the correct terminology? Yeah. It, it's we're letting Athol Savings Bank jump ahead of us on the lien. Yes, Carter, what information do we get from Athol Savings Bank? Um, uh, Holly, do you know if we got anything beyond the documents that we have? I mean, are they taking out, like, are they getting cashed out? Are they, are they in trouble? Are they? No, like, this you have an email. Or... This, oh, excuse me. I do That's have an email mean? from Athol Savings, but there's not detailed information in there about that. We didn't believe, ask them anything? Uh, we, we can, Diane. I believe it's a standard refinance, but we can uh, certainly um, <coughs> uh, hold on to this if you'd like. Well, I mean, normally we would ask questions like, are you getting cash out? Are you, I mean, I don't want to be go behind the loan where people are in trouble. Right. The leave the reason for the loan. Right. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's about uh, uh, forty grand. So, like, what what is the loan for? Is it for a luxury yacht? Are they like you said? Are they getting cash? Right. I, I, I want to know um, what the reasoning behind this is. They're putting a new mortgage in place for forty nine thousand uh, dollars, and our twelve thousand and change would sit behind that. So There's no any. A and a second, and now we're third. No, this is a, we're going to be second behind this first, to our understanding. So they have a lot of Again, equity I, in the property? Um, I would have to go back, and I'm certainly more than happy to do that, uh, to get some additional information for you. I mean, I hate to make them wait for too long, but I, I have questions about this. Yep, happy Anyone to... Um, 
get all this information up front. Yep, happy, happy to go back to them. Does um, anybody Carter? have um, objections to me asking these questions? Oh. Um, I just found the email that I had got from Kim Drudy at Athol Savings. And it says that it's not a full refi. It is an equity line of credit and it's going to replace the equity line that the Davises took out from Gardner Credit Union last year. So they're, so they're replacing are, one lender with another, it appears. Diane, did you, did you hear what uh, Carter said, Diane? Yeah, so they have a mortgage and an equity line and we're in third place. Which normally I wouldn't approve, but it's kind of too late. Yeah, they did right. submit this request a month ago too, so they've been kind of anxiously awaiting our next meeting. All right, so then I okay, I understand now. So I guess I would be fine with that. They're just replacing. I mean, it's too late to say no. I mean, they, they're just replacing one equity line with another equity line. That's oh. correct. Um, then, Mr. Chairman, I would make a, um, I would move to approve the subordination agreement to and only to the lien of the note in the mortgage of Athol Savings Bank for Homer and Leslie Davis of 90 Michaels Lane, Baldwinville, and for the town administrator to sign the agreement. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the subordination um, agreement for 90's Michael, 90 Michaels Lane? Yes, for future reference. These are questions that this board should be asking. I have a question to Diana. Would you please explain again the positioning of the town in this? Because this is the first I hear of it. So. I'm not really sure. If they don't have a first mortgage, then their equity is their first mortgage. And in order for us to be subordinate to that, when you go to the registry, it, when you um, pay something off, that our 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 subor our mortgage quote unquote moves into first place. But they want their mortgage to be first place, so we have to they have to lift you have to lift it and put it into second place. So it's kind of like just a repositioning, but you you want to make sure when we are subordinating to something that we are not like the borrowers are not in trouble or they're taking a bunch of cash out or because then you want to be gone. So the lien is that they owe our town, they owe us money, they owe us money. How did how did yeah. It yeah so they took out a they took out grant funds. And if they're taking a bunch of cash out of their property, they should just pay us off. I mean, you don't want to be left hanging out there right. forever. So see, to... that's why I'm asking all those questions. I need to understand it more. This is the first go around. But we can talk about it. All right. And I, I can explain. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Any further questions on uh, the subordination agreement? Okay. Hearing no more discussion on this, the motion for the subordination at 90 Michaels Lane um, against and only against Homer and Leslie Davis. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Abstain. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, we are moving on to item 5H as in H as in hotel. Um, Carter, I believe you're taking the CARES Act uh, description. Uh, yes, the federal government has uh, two pots of money 
available to communities uh, to help cover expenses which we have incurred and expenses which we have yet to incur. Some of those monies come through the normal FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, uh, grants that you're used to uh, for snow and ice storms, wind storms and the like. And in those instances, we recover 75 cents on the dollar. Sometimes the state steps in with additional monies. In addition, out of the um, CARES uh, Act that was adopted, um, there is a substantial amount of money that came to the state of Massachusetts. Some of that went directly to Boston as a city of above 500,000 and some went to uh, Plymouth County as a governmental unit of greater than 500,000. The balance of the monies are available across the state of Massachusetts. Exactly what expense will go in which pot uh, is frankly a little bit murky right now. We're being told that anything we've incurred to date has to go into the uh, FEMA pot uh, and then there is no definitive date at which point everything moves to the CARES Act. Um, we have reached out, we've given you a list from the state as to what kinds of expenses uh, are eligible. Uh, so, for instance, the uh, PPE that we've been using uh, and will need to reopen to the public. The protective screens, the glass at the treasure collector's office, the glass uh, at the senior center, protective screens. Um, in order for us to all have good remote uh, access to our server, uh, we've had to put in a, a VPN, a virtual private network. Uh, we have acquired Zoom licenses. Um, the fire department uh, can have uh, folks with basic EMT certifications uh, approve above uh, their normal certification level, uh, but only with uh, additional training uh, for which the chief required um, a little bit in excess of $5,000. Uh, we have had um, excess cleaning. Uh, so uh, all of those items will fall into one of uh, these two pots. This will be fast moving uh, and uh, the application uh, needs to be signed by the chief executive officer. Uh, the board is collectively the chief executive officer. But in this instance, uh, we've asked that you authorize uh, the chairman to execute uh, the applications um, for CARES and FEMA monies uh, and to accept uh, any monies which might be uh, forthcoming. I, I will say uh, we're, we're doing our very best to be creative. We've reached out to the school district. We don't believe uh, that they're eligible as an independent authority. We've reached out to Light and Water, um, Sewer. Um, we're doing our very best to be as creative as possible. I do not want to mislead you. The amount of monies uh, that are currently um, targeted for uh, Templeton, we do not believe we'll get anywhere near uh, that 700 plus thousand dollar number. Uh, we'll certainly do our very best to get every dollar that we think uh, we're eligible for, whether it's for, uh, to benefit a taxpayer, a rate payer, um, uh, or the, uh, the school district. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Diane. I make a motion to authorize the chair to execute application for and documents related to the acceptance and expenditure thereof, federal CARES and FEMA monies related to COVID-19 expenditures on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion or questions? I'd be happy to put up the document again if anyone needed to see that. I did uh, wind up showing the page that uh, has Templeton's cap. I guess I have an, a follow-up question to Carter. Do we request the entire 700,000 and per the instructions in that memorandum, just 
turn back anything that we don't use or do we use an estimate? Um, we will be using an estimate. So for instance, uh, and this is, it's not completely clear yet exactly how this is going to work. Uh, and they haven't even opened the portal for the applications just yet. Huh. Uh, but so let me use as a, an example, um, uh, let us say that we want to buy two of the fogging machines, uh, and we, uh, have the chemical, um, similar to what the school district used because we want to fog. Uh, the buildings once a week and the ambulance uh, and the cruisers and the cabs of the public uh, works department. Uh, and we uh, estimate uh, how much chemical that will use and we estimate how many hours. At the end of the day, uh, we're going to only be able to recover exactly what we spend. Uh, so my understanding, and this is evolving, uh, is that we will spend against a budget. Um, and I'm afraid that's really the best I can tell you right now. Uh, some of this truly is rapidly evolving and I'll, I'll speak to that when we get to uh, item M. Um, it literally evolves on a day by day basis. Any other discussion? Okay. Um, on the motion to authorize the chair to execute applications for and documents related to the acceptance and spend expenditure thereof, federal CARES and FEMA monies related to COVID-19. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Harry. Yes. Diane. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, uh, moving on to the next agenda item, uh, 5I, I is in India, action related to the contract award for the ADA plan through a community development block grant. In your packet, you'll see what the ADA plan for compliance is for the town. Um, Adam or Carter, do you want to give it uh, an overview or I can give the thumbnail sketch? Uh, just real briefly, uh, because we do not have a uh, current uh, ADA plan of um, uh, recent enough vintage that we could submit it to the state, uh, we were required to agree to undertake the preparation of one. This is a walkthrough of all of our facilities, yep. a review of all of our programs, uh, and an action plan to address um, uh, any shortfalls that we may have. Uh, that preparation, undertaking and preparation of the plan uh, was required as part of the $800,000 community development block grant that we received last year. Uh, they do allow us uh, to use uh, monies uh, from within the grant, we had budgeted, as I recall, uh, $36,000. So this is about uh, six to $7,000 below budget. Um, and it is a must do, uh, decent firm, very few responses. Uh, and uh, it's the recommendation of the uh, consultant uh, to move forward with this firm. And just to reiterate, the, um, the, the letter came to the Board of Selectmen basically saying, um, here's the process for your ADA uh, transition plan. Um, and in order to do the assessment, as Carter had said, here are all the companies um, in accordance with law. It was an under $50,000 expenditure. So we went with the, the, the lowest bid, which was $26,400. or $26, coming under our um, estimated budget of, it was either 32 or, uh, yeah, it was, it was 32, Carter. Okay. Yeah, um, so basically the, the, the recommendation, um, the recommendation from uh, Mr. Sanborn was for uh, Center for Living and Working Incorporated.
Does anyone need any other uh, information concerning the ADA plan and expenditure of that uh, block grant money? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Jeff. I, I would just uh, make the rest of the board aware if they're not. Uh, a similar thing, the last time I'm aware of the similar thing that had been done was in 2004. Um, I'm not sure, I don't have it in front of me how much uh, it, it had cost. Uh, there are several binders and it did all of the town buildings, including the monuments, Scal Hall, all of that. It, what would it, it would take and the cost involved to bring everything up to ADA compliance? But that's the last time that I'm aware of it was done, it was in 2004, so it's been 16 years. So it, would you, in your uh, recommendation, it's like overdue that we would have an update estimate for what it's gonna take. Okay, Diane, I'm sorry. Um, I know you were trying to uh, chime in. I was just gonna make the motion. Okay. But if other people have questions, I will hold off. Seeing none. Yep, I think, yeah, I think you're clear. Okay, I move to award the contract to the Center for Living and Working Inc. in the amount of $26,400 for the consulting services to prepare a 504 self-assessment and ADA transition plan as described in the town solicitation issued on April 6, 2020 and to authorize the town administrator to negotiate and execute the contract agreement for these services. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Are there any uh, further questions on the uh, contract award for the ADA transition plan? Uh, again, that money is coming from a community development block. Hearing none on the motion to award the contract to Center for Living and Working in the amount of 26400 um, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Uh, thank you, Carter, for, uh, for um, putting that on your plate. Okay, next item on the agenda is item 5, J, G, S, and Juliet, action relating to the order of taking um, related to the map 3-07 parcel 58. Get to the right, right page. Okay, we're, we were in receipt um, of a memorandum from our town council um, and the members of the board, you should, all should have that. Um, this is related to our er earlier action with the North County Land Trust. Um, this is, uh, well, Carter or, or Adam, are you, either of you have a, a, um, a quick synopsis or a presentation? Or I can- Sure, I'll brief this one quickly. Uh, as part of the 500 uh, or so acres, there were two parcels of town land uh, that uh, they wanted to acquire. Uh, a approximately 30 acres we thought at the time. Uh, one parcel has already been sold around 13,500, uh, perhaps uh, three, four months ago. Uh, the second parcel uh, had substantial title questions, uh, couldn't find the chain, the title examiner couldn't find it, we couldn't find it. Finally, the surveyor did find a 1941 tax taking. Uh, that said, uh, town council is advising that out of an abundance of caution, uh, part of this is driven by the fact that we can't get into the probate court uh, to find the, to get the files, to get access uh, to this particular file and see the actual uh, documents um, uh, in front of us. Uh, so we would do this notice of taking, no monies are required because we believe we own it. Uh, and if anyone subsequently wants to contest that, we would then have to pay them back at that point in time. Um, which is exactly the situation we'd faced previously anyways. Uh, upon completing this, and Tom did send, uh, uh, I believe um, uh, yesterday we forwarded to you uh, two minor changes that had come 
uh, from the state of Massachusetts upon their review. Uh, we would uh, file this notice of taking uh, and then bring back before you uh, the actual sale of the land uh, to the state. A couple acres uh, less than we thought once the surveyors um, uh, closed uh, all the corner on the, on the lands. Um, uh, but the pr sale price will still be about 14250 uh, So the total sale price will be around $27,000. Um, and then after we net out legal costs, uh, we'll probably be in the, uh, the $20,000 range. Um, hopefully we can get that completed this fiscal year. Uh, if not, it'll be the early part of fiscal 21. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Dan. I move to adopt the orders of taking for MAP 3-07, parcel, parcel 58, and authorize the town administrator to sign the notice of taking. Thank you, Diane, for the motion. Do I have a second for that motion? Second. Second. Yep. Thank you. I do have a second for that motion. Um, any further questions, comments, observations? Um, my my takeaway, um, reading through everything, including the uh, the amendment that uh, Carter alluded to from from email, um, the minor changes, is what's driving this is more of a uh, a title issue uh, than anything else. So I, I'm in, I'm in favor of it. And people still have three years, even though it was taken from 1941. Yes, this uh, notice goes on record with the court. Uh, anyone who uh, wishes to uh, challenge our claim to title arising out of that 1941 uh, would have to prove that. And if the court determined uh, that they did have interest in the lands, we would then have to uh, pay a portion thereof, all or a portion thereof, uh, to those persons. Um, it was very similar to what we would have had to have done had we not found this particular um, uh, deed. Um, but yes, they have three years to, to prove uh, any interest they might have. What's the, um, what's the likelihood? I'd put it somewhere in the zero to five percent range. And the town would be uh, to make sure that it that it's uh, in concert with the uh, the um, North County Land Trust in that plan. Uh, yes, what? they can't they can't challenge the taking itself. They would simply go to the court and say, "Listen, um, uh, you know." We don't think that the town really owned it. We think uh, that we owned uh, some portion of it. Uh, you know, grandfather left it to three grandchildren, that kind of thing. Right. Um, and we would like X percentage uh, of what the town was paid. And then we would pay over uh, to them that portion. Uh, now that we have found the 19th, this is what we would have had to have done if we didn't find anything. Uh, we would have taken it from owner unknown and right. put the entire payment on deposit with the court awaiting uh, the, the clearing period. Um, but now that we found the title, uh, the town council just thinks that we're really uh, safest to do this. Okay. I've got nothing further. Anyone else? Okay, hearing nothing else on uh, on the motion for the order of taking map 3-07, parcel 58. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you.
Okay, uh, next item up is a request, uh, a transfer of a request between accounts. Um, it looks from the, the notes that the uh, veterans benefits um, requires an additional $5,000. Um, I'm assuming that, uh, again, I see the purpose for, of the request is for extra funeral costs in FY $20. And uh, Sheila needs uh, her account to um, be uh, plussed up. Uh, in fact, it said impact if request is denied, can't pay the veterans for uh, June. Uh, so this request would go to the uh, advisory. Mr. Chairman, if I might. Yep. Uh, the board may recall that uh, Article 1 of the annual town meeting uh, had a supplemental appropriation to the veterans benefits for $7,500. Had we been able to have uh, the annual town meeting on May um, uh, 13, mm -hmm. uh, as originally proposed, this very well might not be before you tonight. Right. Uh, but we do need to try to make sure that there's enough there uh, in the beginning of June. Um, there have been those added funerals. We may need to still move forward with some of those dollars in Article 1, uh, but um, we simply won't get to that annual town meeting and those additional dollars prior to the June 1st payments. Uh, so that is what drives the need uh, for this transfer. Can a uh, can a floor amendment be made for that article if there, if we don't need it as much? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Adam has started the uh, voter information guide, um, and we're uh, looking at that. That one may come right up at the last minute uh, because it has uh, seventy five hundred dollars uh, for um, seed money for the recreation department summer camp which is now not going to happen this summer. So yes, those, those amendments can be made uh, right up to the, uh, uh, the reading of the motion. Thanks, Carter. Adam, I see that you have your hand up. Yeah, just really quick. I, I believe it's 2,500 what a veteran services from at the, uh, for the ATM. Oh, okay. In article one. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to yeah. make sure. Yeah. Cause I, I think okay. I just missed it. That's all. Okay. Diane, you're on mute. $5,000 from the insurance and benefits account to the Veterans Services Department. Department 500 account for the chair to sign. Did the board uh, hear the motion? I think uh, I think most of it got through. Yeah, we heard most of it. We we understood what it was for. Second. Okay, I have a motion for the transfer and a second. Any further discussion? Is that by like flags for the coffin, or do you know, Mike, what it, did they use at the funeral? Um, To pay for the question. funeral. So it's to pay for the funeral. Okay. Yeah, we pay. We pay. Yeah, it's not a lot. No. But I thought it might be Terry, are you all set? Yep. Oh, okay. No, no questions on where it's coming from. Everyone can see it's coming from all benefits. Okay, hey, any other questions? All right, on the motion to adopt the FY20 operating budget by the transfer of 5,000 from insurance and benefits account, uh, department 900 to the veteran services benefits, department 500 account, uh, and for the chair to sign. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, uh, next on the agenda, we've already gone through the, the proposed expenditure plan for chapter 90. And now we are on the last item for new business, which is 
um, action related to possible regional COVID-19 community block grants. Carter, Adam, are you, are you taking that one? I'll, I'll, I'll take this one again. Um, uh, last week, uh, we were notified that the state had received approximately $19 million in additional funding uh, for its community development block grant program uh, that was to be released uh, to non-entitlement communities. That's us, Athol, Winchend, and all the smaller towns uh, across the Commonwealth. Uh, the application was due uh, at that time in two weeks. They have since extended the application deadline by one week. They are now due, if I recall correctly, June 12. Uh, the monies can be used for loans to micro businesses, uh, loans and grants. Those are persons with five or fewer employees. Uh, and at the end, I'd like to circle back to a survey we're uh, doing on that uh, to help with homelessness uh, and to help provide funding uh, for food pantries. Uh, I spoke with Peter Sanborn and we both uh, quickly agreed uh, the maximum amount of the grant is four hundred thousand um, dollars. I spoke with Peter and we both uh, quickly agreed that Templeton as a standalone applicant was highly unlikely to be competitive. Uh, so um, we reached out uh, to uh, Sean Sahasky uh, in Athol. They were putting together an application in partnership with Winchenden. Uh, they agreed to uh, add us uh, to that application. Uh, and at my request, uh, Sean uh, reached out to Phillipston, uh, which I believe will be uh, part of the application as well. So we have a nice uh, compact four town um, regional application. Um, Athol and Phillipston had a lot of uh, interrelationship on their ambulance and some other mutual aid things. Uh, we share the school district uh, with Phillipston, uh, we share um, animal control transfer station, some other things with Winchenden. So I think it's, it's, it's there's some nice geographic uh, relationship and there's some um, uh, programmatic relationship as well. Uh, I cannot tell you exactly uh, how many dollars the final application will be for. Uh, it's being prepared by Athol's um, consultant, the uh, application uh, public hearing, if it's not on our webpage, will be uh, in the next day or so. Um, they would be the uh, primary administering. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, uh, we'll be eligible. We've reached out to um, school district uh, and others trying to get data. Uh, and um, we would uh, ask that you uh, authorize uh, the chair to execute uh, applications for and documents related to uh, the acceptance uh, and expenditures thereof um, uh, federal CDBG monies related to the COVID-19 um, uh, rapid application grant uh, in conjunction with uh, regional partners. Um, and those may change uh, over the next week or two. So moved. Okay, I have a motion. We can go. We can talk a little bit about the details of it. Um, but uh, um, thank you for thank you, Diane, for being very quick uh, to do that. Um, is there a second for that motion? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. So the motion is basically giving um, Carter me the authority to. Uh, uh, forward or accept the, the, the grant applications through this um, community block grant application process for small businesses within our, our community. Uh, that's, that's correct. It's for micro businesses, five and under, uh, food pantry assistance, homeless assistance. Uh, sometimes there's a single sheet <coughs> where the regional partners have to sign 
Um, in this case, we're not even sure that that's what DHCD is going to do. Uh, so we're getting this um, um, a motion just because uh, the application may well uh, be on its way prior to your next meeting. Okay. And I am um, I am looking through my email right now because I know that some of the details of uh, they included some of the, the Templeton details for how many businesses that we have in town that meet that uh, requirement. I'm just trying to pull that up. Uh, Adam, I don't know if you've got that email handy. Uh, so one of the things uh, that we are um, trying to put together to help in the application. Uh, so for instance, we have provided um, the consultant with how many uh, children get uh, what they now call certified uh, aid. Uh, the old term was free and reduced lunch. How many children are currently getting uh, meals programs through the school? Uh, the program, that program itself is not eligible, but we're hopeful it will be uh, an indicator uh, of the need for nutritional assistance uh, in the community. With respect to the micro business, we really don't have a good handle. We have a list of uh, DBAs. We don't necessarily know how many people are employed uh, and the like. Uh, so uh, we have put up uh, today, I believe, Holly will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I know she was working on it. Uh, a notice to all of the small businesses, micro businesses in town, uh, taking them to a, a survey monkey uh, that can be filled out, then can help provide us with some of the kinds of data uh, that we need uh, to help um, uh, boost uh, our uh, our competitiveness for this grant. Yeah, so we would uh, we would encourage uh, members of the board, folks who watch this, uh, uh, to encourage uh, micro businesses that they know of and to spread the word. The more in data we can get, the more competitive we'll be. Yep. Um, Terry, just two seconds. Uh, I do see your hand up there. Um, the, the email from Linda. Overing um, had quoted Department of Unemployment Assistance 2018 data lists, 128 private establishments employing about a thousand individuals in Templeton, of which 93 of the businesses were considered service. So that, that's just some of the numbers that in that uh, that email thread that that, uh, that I had seen um, on that. Uh, go ahead. Then one. If we do get any money, is then is it competitive what people would have to apply for? Uh, so the micro business would require an application, yes. Uh, and folks who uh, use the food pantry would have to uh, sign a certification that they're uh, within certain income limits um, uh, for documentation. Uh, it's not going to be, you know, we're not going to be doing deep dives on tax or paychecks or any of that kind of thing. Uh, but we anticipate the DHCD will require some form of paperwork to be signed by the users. So you'd come in, you would take a look at the certification, you'd sign it, you would get the assistance uh, from the food pantry and be on your way. Uh, as with any program, I anticipate there will be some level of paperwork uh, at each each step. I, I don't know how many dollars Templeton itself will get out of this process. Uh, I can tell you we would get zero, most likely applying on our own. Uh, so I've kind of taken the view that it's, I'm old enough to remember the coal truck, you know, uh, well, when pieces of coal would fall off and, and people would think they were lucky to grab those. I'm, I'm kind of taking that point of view uh, uh, on this. So right now they don't have to fill out anything for the food pantry? Uh, not at present, no. Uh, they did up until Jackie uh, took it over, but she's changed uh, some of that. Terry, she, I, I, they do, they do, um, when people that come and use the food pantry, um, they don't fill out data per se, like tracking data, but they, we certainly are looking for 
uh, input at the um, we're um, looking for input on like what people are looking for and otherwise so they come in and they basically they fill out an intake form that says you know what are you looking for that kind of thing that way we can kind of track right otherwise right um, it's uh, like um, like I had said in one of our, our previous meetings, um, we had external people come to our food pantry and given uh, Jackie uh, kudos on being a very organized operation. But it, this is exciting. I mean, this um, participation in this, this uh, regional block grant is exciting because it, op it opens doors. Uh, you know, these little pieces of coal that are falling off the truck are good for people within the community that uh, are most affected by it. Um, that has certainly been my view of this. Large corporation, what I hope that doesn't happen is that you know, we can only shop at Walmart um, because only uh, large corporations are going to weather the storm on these things. We want the small businesses that are having some difficulty um, with income and otherwise to be able to weather the storm, uh, whatever the situation, uh, everyone's situation is different, but this is a, yet uh, another feather in the cap of our community to be able to say here is another way that we can uh, that we can help out maybe not we but at least administrate administering this uh, the nice thing if i might about this regional application um, is it has taken some work on our part uh, but the major burden uh, is being carried by uh, the consultant uh, and it would be administered by the town of uh, uh, Athol through that consultant. Uh, so it's a modest level of effort uh, for what I hope would be some reasonable return. Uh, and, and Terry, there is no state or federal largesse without some form of paperwork of some kind at some point along the line. Oh, I get it. Where I volunteer, we keep track of uh, articles of clothing or housing or bedding. Sure. Just a name, a town, and the items. And yep. And uh, Carter, this is, uh, is it federal money? Uh, this is federal money, which has been from the Community Development Block Grant, which is transferred down to the state, uh, which then administers it to its non-entitled communities uh, through the Massachusetts Small Cities Program. Okay. Any other questions or issues? All right. Um, on the motion to authorize the town administrator to pursue the application process and for the chair to execute documents related to the COVID-19 community development block grant on behalf of the board of selectmen and to accept and ex expend federal monies related there too. How do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Harry. Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Holly and I will Holly and I were working behind the, behind the scenes to make sure we had the, uh, the wording uh, squared away. So I think we're good. Uh, and Mike, if I might just remind people, if they go to the town's webpage uh, on town news, the very first item uh, there is called the COVID-19 micro business assistance. Uh, it talks to the fact that we're working uh, with the towns of Athol, um, uh, Winchenden and Phillipston and provides a link to that survey uh, that we're hoping micro business owners uh, with five or fewer employees uh, could fill out uh, to help us provide uh, some, uh, some uh, added data to help support the application. Great, uh, I went over there and I saw it right at the first thing at, at the top. I uh, hope the survey works uh, just as well. Okay, um, we are moving uh, off of new business, and we are back to old business. Our no, 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 no. Our only old business. Is, oh, I'm sorry, Adam, did you have something? Yes, uh, th where there was an amended agenda that was sent out, um, you actually have N, 
uh, for uh, the special town meeting. I, uh, I did know was, that I, I was I was going off of my printout um, so I could uh, tr track along with, with uh, not losing myself on the computer screen. So I, I was aware that you were going to be briefing a special town meeting this evening. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty simple. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, the, the board approved the uh, the warrant and uh, one of the uh, articles dropped off. This is a special town meeting for 630 and it's gonna include the sewer's operating budget. For whatever reason, the sewer capital transferred over, the sewer operating fell off, but we caught it and we just need the board to approve the warrant in this article. And that's it. Okay, we're just gonna take a second to make sure everybody's got what they need. Um, motion and uh, uh, and otherwise. I don't have a motion, but I make a motion to approve the warrant for the special town meeting um, to include the sewer operating budget at 6.30. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, any questions on the special town meeting that will basically occur right right after or right in conjunction with the annual town meeting? And, it, and basically the special town meeting is just for inclusion of the sewer operating budget. We take the cost of this out of Adam's pay. <laughs> <laughs> If, if I, Mr. Chairman, if I could just also add, uh, if we could have the members of the board, uh, whenever they can, they could uh, show up to the, uh, the select board of selectmen's office at some point over the weekend. Uh, we have it available for the members to sign because we'll need three signatures uh, by Monday morning, so Carol can get this posted. Okay, that's all I got. I just want to take a, a second to put it out there. I know uh, we update the uh, the um, the agenda and otherwise, but I just want to make sure it's part of the public record that we're at least showing what the, the warrant looks like. Does everyone see that on their screen? Yes. Okay. That's good. I just, you know, whether people uh, hit pause or otherwise, I just wanted to make sure that we had, um, we have what that uh, the warrant looks like uh, within the meeting. Okay, with that on the motion that it's been seconded for the special town meeting to, to occur in conjunction with annual town meeting at 630 with one article concerning the sewer department operating budget. How do you vote, uh, Jeff? Yes. Great. Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Thank you, Adam. All right. Let me get back over. Wrong one. Okay, we are moving on to uh, old business. We are revisiting, you've uh, all had some time now to con, uh, consider the Baldwinville Elementary School proposals. Um, there was um, an earlier executive session to go over any legal or any uh, um, items under Mass General Law for um, strategy for, uh, I believe that's 21A6 and 21A3. Um, so we have a, a, a choice between um, two proposals, Eden um, RE of Massachusetts LLC, which is the primary use would be a cannabis grow and process facility. And the second party is MPC Development LLC. Uh, and their primary use is um, 
housing, um, 50 plus uh, market in uh, affordable units. Um, has everyone had time to uh, consider? Uh, does anyone have any additional questions? Um, Based on any of the, any of uh, any any details that it may have changed. No, well, actually, I don't think. And if we do go with one of the uh, out of the two, there we do have a uh, supplement um, motion that we'll have to make based on um, the real estate uh, situation right there at BES. Comment I would have was if we do go with MPZ development, it still isn't enough housing for our community. It's a good it's a good thing and I I you know have done some asked some questions. So we do need the housing but it's still we're still gonna need to go with the CPC for the on. That is correct. Um, the MPZ, uh, it requires, um, Carter, I'm, 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 uh, it requires block grants. Uh, it requires, um, their condition on yep. uh, $1.2 million of, uh, uh, CPA money from the Community Preservation Committee. That's right. I'm sorry. Uh, those monies, uh, those monies are there. We've not spent much uh, on community housing, uh, and it requires a 6.2 million dollar, if I recall correctly, uh, set aside of tax credits from the Massachusetts Department of Housing uh, and Community Development. Uh, and to Terry's point, uh, we would still want to continue uh, with 17,500 dollar. Uh, study uh, that we've proposed at the annual town meeting uh, because while having these 50 units added uh, would be a great addition to the housing stock, uh, your needs for affordable housing uh, still would have a long ways to go. All right, um, I'm gonna go for this one. I move to designate MPZ Development LLC as the preferred developer for the Baldwinville Elementary School and to authorize the town administrator, the town administrator to negotiate a draft agreement for the sale and development thereof for submission to this board for final approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion, any further observations on motion to choose MPZ Development LLC? A good start, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Uh, yes, Holly. I believe we need to declare the additional portion surplus property before this motion is voted on. Okay, before it. All right. Um, it's all right because. It's, it's difficult to put that, that egg before the chicken because <laughs> you're waiting for someone to make the motion on that. And it's almost like saying, you know, saying, letting the cat out of the bag. I'm uh, let's see if I can keep a hat trick of uh, metaphors. Oh, got it. Um, okay, I will, uh, I'll, um, I will table my motion for uh, to designate MP. MPZ, sorry. Um, and I will further move to declare an additional portion of parcel number 1-4.1-407 surplus properties and available for disposition. Any? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Everyone understands that that's required if we're going to, if we choose to for MPZ develop. Okay, hearing nothing further on the motion to declare additional portion of parcel number 
1-407 surplus properties and available for disposition. How do you vote, Jeff? No. Terry? Yes. Diane? I didn't hear how Jeff voted. Jeff voted no. No, no one voting yes. I'm sorry, Diane, could you repeat your vote? Yes. Okay. I vote yes. Okay, I further move to designate MPZ Development LLC as the preferred developer for the Baldwinville Elementary School and to authorize the town administrator to negotiate a draft agreement for the sale and development thereof for submission to this board for final approval. Terry, you cut out, but I believe uh, I believe you did second it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have a motion and a second to designate MPZ Development LLC as the preferred developer. Discussion. It was seconded. Yep. Yeah. No, I I would like the public to understand that both companies have risk. And this company has risk in that it has to go through the CPC of over a million dollars and that there are um, over six million dollars in um, block grants. Although I believe that it can be done, this property probably wouldn't be finished until 2022 due to COVID-19. Um, I think it's a good project um, to put forward. Um, this town um, needs affordable housing. Um, and, uh, you know, although we were gonna, you know, the only thing that we had available to us last time um, was cannabis. Um, I've seen, I was on the screening committee and um, the drawings were superb. The presentation um, was superb. Uh, I think there are some things that still need to be worked out but I think that um, putting this back on the tax revenue, um, water and sewer and um, electricity and um, excise tax and um, is all a major benefit to our community. Um, so that's where I stand with that. There will be um, hoops. Um, that have to be gone through, but I think that um, it can all be done um, with the support of the Templeton community. I agree. Thank you for that, Diane. Um, I think there are a lot of the same reasons uh, that I think are, are good for this, but it certainly does require some elbow, elbow grease to go along with it. But um, when I think of um, that, when I think of that area of Baldwinville, um, and how we, we have other um, prospects for um, the cannabis industry. Uh, I, I like the idea of having the affordable housing um, uh, solutions. That's really the word I would like to use. Uh, the idea of affordable house solutions rather than problems. Um, so I, again, um, I, made, I made that motion, I'm in favor of it. Um, I think it's a good thing. Any further discussion on um, the proposed motion for NPC development? Okay, hearing nothing further on the motion to designate NPC uh, development LLC as a preferred development for the Baldwinville Elementary School. And for the town administrator to negotiate a draft agreement for the sale and development, therefore, thereof, of, for submission to this board for final approval. How do you vote, Jeff? No. Terry? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, thank you to uh, everybody on the board who uh, put a lot of thought into this. Um, and I know this came up, uh, this, we've been talking about this for a while. Um, I, I'm glad that people went through a lot of a uh, of, of thought process for this. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I uh, comment yes. on it for a moment? Yep, please? go ahead. 
please. Uh, I just uh, I just want to remind the board and the community uh, that we understand uh, economic development is critical uh, to broadening the tax base and being able to continue to provide services to the community at an affordable uh, tax rate. Uh, and therefore, when we um, uh, got these two proposals, you could see they were both uh, uh, good quality firms, a uh, lot to offer the community. Uh, Lori Wieda in the Office of Development Services uh, began an effort to compile uh, a variety of alternative properties that we thought might meet the needs of uh, uh, either party, which everyone did not get uh, that. And we were able uh, to spend time this morning uh, with uh, those folks, showed them uh, four parcels and we believe uh, that they have interest in one of those uh, and so we'll continue those efforts uh, uh, a tip of the hat to Laurie for all she's done on it uh, but we're going to do our very best uh, to make sure that we secure both of these types of development uh, for the community um, and I just I just want folks to be uh, aware of that Right. Thank you, Carter. Yeah, one door closing and another opens. Um, I, I do think that uh, there's there's some momentum that we're feeling right now, so it's good. I'm glad we're moving forward with a couple of different opportunities. Okay, that is the end of new business and old business. Um, time now is 8:21. Actually, that's not bad for how much we have on uh, on the uh, the agenda tonight. I'd like to move to board and staff member comments. Um, would, it, uh, would someone like to uh, kick us off with, oh, Carter had his hand up first. Um, uh, just, um, uh, we uh, uh, issued this, uh, uh, it'll be going up on the web uh, the next day or so, if it isn't there already, uh, it's being mailed to all the residents uh, uh, on Orchard Lane. I believe we forwarded it. Uh, to the board as well. Uh, but the construction on Orchard Lane, uh, which is the replacement of water main, um, a substantial upgrading of the drainage in that area, uh, reconstruction uh, of the road, uh, kicks off in earnest uh, beginning Monday, June 1, 2020. Uh, during the week, uh, some folks may have seen some equipment, um, uh, supplies and uh, temporary silt fencing of the life uh, and the like starting to be uh, uh, installed. Uh, in general, construction will be uh, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, there may be uh, periods of time uh, when there are disruptions and when we uh, know it's gonna be a major uh, problem, we'll be sure to do a code red out to everybody. Uh, but this notice provides um, the residents uh, with access to the uh, general contractor, uh, all the various phone numbers uh, that are uh, needed, including uh, the Office of the Board of Selectmen, uh, should there just be a, a question in general. Uh, but that uh, $700,000 plus or minus uh, infrastructure is being financed uh, by Massachusetts uh, Community Development Block Grant uh, and not the rate payers. Uh, there's a little bit of rate paying money in there. Um, but not the ratepayers, not the taxpayers, um, uh, and uh, we're we're just eager to see that kicked off and completed before the fall. Thanks, Carter. Okay, uh, Diane, Terry, Jeff. Okay, thank you, Diane. Sorry, I did have something. I just wanted to um, say that the virtual memorial program was excellent. Absolutely, well, I, I I saw a lot of work that went into that. Thank you for uh, thank you for mentioning that. Terry or Jeff? Yes, uh, I have a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the passing of uh, Pete Casper uh, in between our last meeting and this meeting. Uh, he was what I consider one of the old, uh, 
the old reliable people who used to show up at selectmen's meetings and uh, participate uh, regularly. Uh, he joins the long list, unfortunately, of uh, those people who are passing away. Uh, Bumpsy Dennis, uh, Ed Hearns, uh, Charlie Perkins, Paul Cons, a lot of them. They used to come and participate in the meetings and, and used to were there regularly and, and asked questions and took part in the town. Uh, he'll be another individual greatly missed uh, by myself. Uh, also, uh, concerning the annual town report, um, I'm wondering how we're going to, I know it's online, but there are people who um, either don't do with the internet, uh, don't have access, uh, or actually prefer a hard copy. And since there is a mass general law that says the selectmen are supposed to make that available to the residents before the annual town meeting, and you used to get it at the election before we switched and, and made the election happen after town meeting, uh, I'm wondering how uh, will people be able to get their hands on a hard copy before the annual town meeting if the town hall is not opened uh, before the annual town meeting. Uh, and my second part with the annual town report, I have looked through it and I notice again, uh, the salaries of all town employees and the salaries of all school employees uh, are not included. Uh, and I know the other town in the district uh, publishes those school salaries in their annual town report so I draw the conclusion that the school district does put that information out, uh, but so far, uh, Templeton has chosen not to include that. It is an account of public money to the people who pay the bills, the taxpayers. Uh, it used to always be in there, and uh, it's something I think that should return. Lastly, uh, there's a house on Pleasant Street in the village of Baldwinville that is uh, burned down. It's been burned down for a number of years. Uh, I understand that the uh, the town owns that through land court as of February of this year. Uh, I found that out in a roundabout way rather than through uh, the town administration, the town staff. Uh, since the selectmen, according to the bylaw, are responsible for uh, the sale or the disposition of land, uh, property taken uh, by the town for failure of property taxes. Uh, one, why would uh, we not notified as a board that uh, the town now owns that house so we could come up with a disposition? Uh, a lot of residents have inquired and spoke up about it as a, a piece of property in that neighborhood that is half burned down. Uh, since the town now owns it, uh, I believe that we should put take some steps uh, so the town could state they took reasonable action uh, to secure that. People go on there, get hurt, uh, animals start going in there, uh, skunks, anything, foxes, porcupine, whatever, uh, some that do carry rabies, uh, we need to take our due diligence. I believe, and uh, have signage, no trespassing, board up whatever windows, doors we need to do. Uh, but my main thing is that the board was not made aware that that was sold, that I'm aware of. I checked through my emails and, and didn't see uh, anything in it, other than uh, I emailed the town treasurer and asked about if it was going to land court, and I was told it was in tax title. Uh, but I was not told that uh, the town actually had possession of that land as of February. I found that out in uh, a couple roundabout ways. Uh, and I believe that uh, the town administrator is accountable for that, uh, passing on information to the board. We are the ones responsible ultimately for the disposition of that property. Uh, and it, uh, it kind of bothers me that the town is liable and we should, as a board, we should be taking steps. If not in, uh, at least in conjunction with the, uh, the Board of Health to, uh, to secure that town property. So anything happens uh, and we don't take steps, uh, 
it puts us in a more precarious position that we really don't need to be in. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Thanks, Jeff, I appreciate that. Um, so um, thank you for um, notifying about Pete Casper. I appreciate that. Um, annual town report, how can we get copies? Um, town report suggestion to make sure that we put salary information from town and school and otherwise in there. And then the house on Pleasant Street. Jeff, that house is uh, like right across from uh, Dunkin' Donuts, is it not? Am I thinking of the right one? Correct. I believe okay. it was the Oja property. Okay. Um, any of the staff that we have on right now, do you want to handle, uh, do you want to take any of these? Yeah, I'll take uh, some of them. Okay. Or Carter, you want to go? Or you want no, me to no, go? Go, go ahead. So I'm just going to answer a couple of those. Uh, Carter tasked me with, uh, we just wired that building not too long ago, and I have to look into some some. Uh, procurement aspect because it was acquired by tax title. So with the disposition process, we were actually working on uh, a plan for that and we, we just didn't want to make a blanket statement. We wanted to go about this uh, a smart way. And, um, you know, could we have told the board? Absolutely. But we're working on, uh, I have a phone call out to uh, the town administrator, Sean, over in Athol. Uh, I know he's been handling a couple of these and we just want to make sure we do it right. Um, and that's where we're going on the Pleasant Street house. I know it's an eyesore. People are frustrated about it. This took a, tough, a while. We're making progress, and we are we are moving forward on that end. Uh, in regards to the annual town report, I do I did get some phone calls and a uh, person stopped by um, and did pick up uh, annual town report. I'll, I'll just put my number out there because I'm a, I'm in the office eight nine four two seven seven eight. Anybody wants a I know we're closed right now, um, but if anybody calls me, I'll be more than happy to bring one out to them. Uh, that's what we can do for now in the meantime. And uh, with that, uh, well, we do what we can. And uh, Carter, did you want to add? Well, I just want to, uh, I'm just trying to uh, think quickly. And we do have two facilities that are still open uh, to the general public. Um, uh, one is the uh, the police department at the police dispatch window, uh, and the other is the fire department. Uh, so I think we can get some uh, copies out there and get uh, something out on the web as to how people can secure hard copies. Uh, so we can address that in the next uh, day or two, I think, easily. Great. Um, thank you for that, guys. Uh, thank you for those responses on um, the Pleasant Street house. What is the normal process for that? Uh, actually, I'm not even, I don't wanna ask a process question right now. How many properties uh, are in that kind of situation where we've taken, uh, we've, we've earned it from, uh, from land court and we have disposition? Is it a handful? Is it just uh, Pleasant Street or? No one could tell you definitively. It's something uh, we started working on and we lost the intern. Um, certainly Pleasant Street uh, and a few others, uh, we'd reached out to uh, our uh, tax council to try to start uh, to move towards an auction, uh, but we'll get you a fuller report uh, over the next week or so uh, and an approach to try to, we'd, appropriated the 15,000 for tax title. Um, but I think it's a larger issue and Jeff's uh, certainly not out of line to take us to task uh, on the notification um, once the treasurer became aware of it. Uh, but let us get you something over the next week or so. Roger, thank you. Um, before we uh, finish up with any staff comments, Terry, do you have anything? No, not at this time. Okay, thanks, Terry. Um, I really just, I'll be very brief. Um, I have been acting as the public information officer. Um, I am the architect and author of the daily status report. Uh, for those watching the recording right now, um, 
maybe one in particular guffawing at the fact that it's not daily. It did start out daily when we needed to push out a lot of information. Um, and being the PIO for our both our um, incident commander and our deputy incident commander, and certainly one of the most uh, important people in this community during this crisis uh, was our, our health agent, Lori Witta. I, we've been trying to put out as much information as possible. Um, we did drop down as uh, items became uh, available, and I, I've been uh, making sure that we still put out a good product with that. I do see us transitioning away from those reports. Um, I, I will make sure that uh, the ICS team, um, it, I already know they're working on a transition plan, but at least I wanted to be able to address it from a the public information officer perspective to say they are still occurring, but uh, the content is about as transparent with the other news outlets at this point. And again, I got to tip my hat to TCTV for uh, really acting um, and putting a lot of information out there. That's one of the things that I've been most proud of, of uh, our community during this crisis, is that we worked together and had a unified voice for the information that we put out there for the public. Um, I don't think there was a time where we, we did not scramble to get information to the people that requested it, whether it was our jurisdiction or not, we made sure that we had an answer for them. I, I did spend some time polling other communities for what they were offering to their community. And that's what makes me proud that we're able to put out as much information as possible. Yes, I know that we had um, a bump in the road in terms of numbers. I think a lot of communities, I think 20, 27% of the communities in our county um, sided the way that we did, that we were not going, that uh, we, we chose to look at public health law and wanted to protect our, our residents' information. Um, as those numbers were, gr were growing, and as the State uh, Department of Public Health um, further, I think, let their lawyers uh, kind of uh, guide, guide them on uh, the acceptable release of information, we then also went along with our county partners. Those have been the most important people during this, this crisis is our county partners. Um, but that's, uh, that's my view uh, from the, the uh, as by way of a, a COVID-19 update. Um, the state's got a four phase plan. Uh, golf, golf courses are opening up. Uh, I, I would still ask the same thing that our governor asks our public. Please wear a mask. Please uh, observe social distancing and your six feet uh, uh, perimeter and please wash your hands. Um, thank you to the community for keeping our numbers uh, relatively low with our population. I know that the numbers look higher when you're comparing them to other uh, communities around us, but uh, you just got to take a look at, uh, at what drives a lot of those numbers. And uh, that's all I have this evening. Um, I do believe that we are um, requesting to go into executive session this evening. Any uh, staff member comments? Okay. Um, the uh, I will make a motion to go into executive session um, in accordance with Mass General Law 30A, subsection 21A2 strategy and negotiations with non-union personnel. We will not be coming back into uh, open session and there will be uh, like, there will likely be no vote. So this would be the end of the public meeting. So moved. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Again, to explain, we are going into executive session um, in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, subsection 21A-2. Um, we are not coming back to public session and there will be no vote. Um, 
thank you for, uh, I know that we had some technical difficulties tonight. Um, uh, we did get the recording in accordance with uh, our amended uh, open meeting law and that will be available soon. I did see while we were in our meeting, TCTV did make notifications that they were experiencing technical difficulties. So anyone looking for our live stream at least saw TCTV's notice. Um, thank you. And I'll, uh, did I, oh, I didn't, I didn't do a vote. Um, on the vote for moving into executive committee, how do you vote, Jeff? Yes. Terry? Yes. Diane? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, we are moving into executive session. Good night, folks. See you on the dark side.